thank you for watching this video. This video is brought to you by newkeyviewer.com. So here's our website, newkeyviewer.com. You can uh, bookmark it. Uh, we have all kinds of good uh, articles and uh, tips, updates, everything. So in this video, I'm going to focus on how to reconcile inventory valuation to inventory asset account that you have uh, in on, on GL, General Ledger. So reconcile inventory valuation to inventory asset account, uh, GL account. All right, so I'm going to go to uh, QuickBooks online. So I'm logged in. Okay, there are a couple of things. The first thing you want to do is... Uh, uh, you want to run few reports in here. Everything to do with inventory. So in QuickBooks Online, if you have a plus plan, you have inventory tracking, and they have two reports: inventory valuation, inventory summary, and inventory worksheet. Okay, let's focus on inventory worksheet. So we have two separate videos on works: one on web worksheet and the other one on summary and detail. So you can. Uh, check it out but this focus this video is going to focus on reconciling this inventory values and summary uh, for example in here this number to the the balance sheet uh, inventory asset or general ledger same account inventory asset account which is this number in here so just run the balance sheet or general ledger and look for uh, uh, inventory asset account it would be under car, other current assets right and so this number it should match uh, so it should match this number should match with your inventory valuation report okay if it's off uh, you need to reconcile it uh, well what you do after uh, before you uh, Reconcile it. So there are a couple of steps you need to follow. I'm going to run this, and I'm going to also run. Oh, not that one. I'm going to run uh, inventory worksheet. So that's where I'll start. Inventory worksheet. Okay. So whenever you want to do reconciliation between those the valuation and inventory asset, first it's a good idea to take physical count of all your inventory. So that's where you should start. Uh, so for example, in here you see negatives, you know, and uh, uh, somewhere you may be over overstated. So you need to take physical count and. Uh, so if you see minus like this, negative like this, it could be uh, due to several uh, factors. Uh, for example, uh, you haven't recorded, you haven't recorded all your purchases, all your purchases, right? Or when you invoiced it, recorded uh, to wrong uh, part number. Uh, okay, so for example, you know this is where you should record all your uh, purchases. So if you are paying by credit card or ATM, you should record all the open bills that you haven't recorded. Same thing in here, writing checks. Right, those two are paid. And if you haven't paid, uh, the sitting sitting near someplace, so you should record as a bill, vendor bill. Then you will create the accounts payable, and it will also update your uh, uh, your uh, inventory. Uh, quantity and valuation so another thing is you know you created sales receipt or invoices but you haven't shipped it you know uh, is holding it whatever reason so you have to make sure you have to set aside uh, you know uh, you have to ship all those uh, if not you can't ship it then you have to make some other adjustment uh, you know uh, so in the meantime you know you have to make sure those two things are done uh, you know uh, you can just go ahead and take physical but you, you'll have to consider those two factors before you make uh, uh, reconciliation okay so once you have enter all the purchases uh, either expense or check 
or vendor bill and also if you have shipped all the uh, you know products that you have on your sales receipt or uh, or your uh, invoices then you need to make an adjustment okay to make an adjustment what you need to do is basically you come down here and once you have the physical inventory you will see the variance in here you can ex you can uh, export this to excel and then come up with the value uh, value you know the variance quantities you know let's say the physical count on in here 74 and when you count it it's 73 or 75 so you know you'll have all the variance report or just the physical count here or right, let's say physical count here so just print this one and you come down to inventory quantity adjustment don't worry about the dollar amount at that point don't worry about dollar there's no dollar in here so you just come down to uh, plus sign and on the other you'll see inventory quantity adjustment and then just select uh, based on this uh, uh, report inventory uh, report which is count report right so based on this report it'll be just in front of you, you and uh, then just go ahead and uh, uh, enter the variance inventory quantity adjustment so you will have for example in here let's just select one in here so in here zero let's say you have uh, one quantity in stock right in here you have let's say another another one here so you have 18 let's say when you count it it's only 17 like this so it should keep on doing it and uh, once it's done then you basically uh, select the inventory adjustment account for now so just select uh, let's say in this case uh, inventory adjustment account so let's say it will be part of cost of goods sold inventory adjustment if you don't have it then you can create this account uh, that way you know it will be separate than your regular cost of goods sold account so regular cost of goods sold basically be just for your uh, uh, handling your inventory through you know uh, your cost of goods sold through invoices sales forms and so you, if you just create this then you'll be separate then you'll know uh, you know, it's time you're looking at it, uh, uh, how much inventory adjustments you made uh, in, you know, in particular time. So once you're done, then basically just save this, okay, and then you run this, uh, uh, you run this inventory valuation summary report, like this. Okay, and uh, while you are on this, you, you know, if there's this huge difference, sometimes if there's a huge difference, then you may want to analyze it, see why it's such a big difference, you know. If it's one or two, it could be various, you know, it was shipping wrong or uh, wrong uh, quantity on, wrong item on invoicing or somebody just overshipped it or, you know, uh, undership normally doesn't, ha even if it happens, you your customer will call you and say, hey, you undershipped it. If you overshipped it, well, who knows? So most likely it's overshipped. Uh, that's where you have you run into problem. So you also need to review your uh, uh, your inventory valuation report. Just look at the detail thing, you know, inventory detail, like this one. And normally this is just for like a, this month only and you will need to change the date to see all the details in here like in here if you want to see it from the beginning so you just change this to all dates so now you have uh, you know all the details in here so you can look at it see where you uh, made an error or where it, where it went wrong for example you bought 100 and keep shipping you know and uh, uh, it's possible you just pick this item and uh, it was supposed to be something else uh, so could be all kinds of reasons so once you finalize uh, 
the the inventory valuation summary. This is the revised one, let's say. Let's revise this one. So don't worry about the uh, average cost and stuff. You can't you can't you can't change this one. So you have to focus on the quantity. Once you focus on the quantity, it automatically create uh, asset value for you in QuickBooks Online. So now it's 344.269.52. Now if you run your balance sheet, I'm going to refresh this. Okay, so 344.269.50 and 344.269.52. So that's pretty much identical. So you don't need to make any uh, uh, value adjustment, right? Let's say if this is off by a uh, uh, couple of thousand, couple whatever, then at that point you need to write a journal entry. This one time journal entry. Let's say you know it's off by thousand dollars, right? Okay, so in here you come down. Uh, so normally if, if you just follow uh, proper instructions in and out, you know, uh, just buy it and then sell it, buy it and sell it, uh, unless you make mistake on shipping the wrong product or over over shipping it then this inventory uh, run should come out okay but that's when you you know you made a mistake some shipping department made a mistake or whatever uh, that's when you run into problem so basically if you want to uh, write a journal let's go to journal entry okay so as you can see on journal entry you don't see any quantity it's just a dollar uh, dollar value so you have to adjust the inventory asset account inventory asset inventory asset and then the whatever adjustment you're making uh, it will be to uh, inventory adjustment account like this okay so if the if the uh, inventory valuation is showing uh, uh, you know higher let's say inventory value is showing $1,000 higher than your uh, inventory asset account. That means you have to add as a debit, right? Inventory asset is your uh, is a uh, other current asset as as debit side. So this is uh, to add to your inventory asset, right? And if your inventory asset, uh, if the valuation is lower than your inventory asset that you see on your balance sheet, then it's negative. And uh, so it's basically if it's negative. And uh, so the inventory asset account, inventory asset account, inventory adjustment account. So let's say it's zero, one thousand in here. So this means inventory uh, adjustment, inventory valuation is higher than your inventory asset account. So that means you gain, you have some credit to your PL at that time. On the other hand, so if your inventory asset account, let's say, is one thousand dollar less than valuation then inventory valuation inventory adjustment right okay so in this case I'm going to delete this so let's see here I'm going to delete in here someplace that's okay okay so uh, I can move this Right, I can bring it down here. Okay, all right. So now, uh, so it's basically debit and credit, right? And in this case, it's the uh, the other opposite. And in this case, you have one thousand dollar write off. So, you know, when you take inventory, uh, most of the time you will have to write it off because inventory is you don't you don't see like this because inventory is not going to grow. Uh, inventory you'll have you know making adjustment you have more like uh, making adjustments because you over it or wrong ship wrong shipment or whatever so you'll have you know a loss in here most likely uh, but sometimes you know you ship it and uh, your claim your uh, supply your uh, customer never claimed it then you may have credit too all right so anyway so this is how you have to do it just save this so once you save it then uh, one more time is uh, make sure the, uh, the the 
asset account in your balance sheet, they do match now. They should match now. So whatever you see in here, it should also be uh, on your balance sheet geo inventory asset account. Uh, so you need to do this like on a regular basis. Uh, also, before you do this, it's a good idea to have your bank reconciliation done too, you know. So it's a good possibility you bought it and you have a reconciled bank account. So it's, it's a good idea to do bank reconciliation first before you, uh, you can do the physical physical account. That's not a problem. You know, just keep on doing this. And before you make the final uh, adjustment to your uh, general ledger account, uh, make sure uh, your bank account is also reconciled. So that's another one. Okay, or thank you for watching. Visit our website, newqbo.com, and uh, uh, you know, you know to bookmark this website. So we have all kinds of uh, uh, QuickBooks articles and uh, uh, you know, new updates and great tips. So thank you. Bye.